Well, hello everyone and welcome back. This is Joni at Joni's Journals. How is everyone doing? Um, we are here today to decorate two of the pages in our Tim Holtz trifold folio. As you remember, I showed you yesterday that I did decorate the cover using the browns and blacks and I had decorated one of the little inside flip pages. I have removed the papers from the journal because it'll just make it a little bit easier for us to decorate. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to move the journal over a bit and close this flap. And I have pulled out a bunch of ephemera, the green, and I have also pulled out some purple, which you really can't see. And I have been fiddling and playing with my Crayola markers. And you can see that I've colored in this pretty little lady. And I have also colored in the lady that we're going to be adding to this page. So now I have been fiddling and fussing and, and laying it out and trying to figure out what I'm going to do with it. So basically, we are just going to go for it. <laughs> now I have my art glitter glue, which seems to be all cleaned out and ready to go for us. So let's see if we can start maybe gluing some of these pieces down. Now I did lay it out so that I would have everything in the right order when we put it down, but I think I've moved a little bit. And you may see some pencil marks on here, which is where I was fiddling and fussing and trying to add everything. Now I am just going to turn this on its side because I think that that might be an easier way. Oh, that was yucky. I think that I need to put a new pin into my art glitter glue because the one that I have seems to be rusting. That was pretty gross. Okay, well, at least you see what happens when you don't use a stainless steel pin. And I think what I'm gonna have to do is go and try and find one in my little collection of pins. And so, yeah, I have picked out some pretty little pieces that I'm hoping that I will get on here straight. And let's see, we've got that one there. And then I picked out this one, which I have been fiddling with and trying to figure out what direction I wanted to put it in, but I think I finally decided to go with it, something like this. Okay, so let's see if we can get this to not be so gross this time. Yeah, that seems to be coming out okay. Looks like I am just going to have to find a new pin. That's really odd because I use those same pins in my other bottles of glue and they don't really seem to be rusting. So let's just see. We'll put this one down here. I had put some pencil marks on here for the different, several different ways that I was thinking of laying this out. And I decided that I didn't really like any of them. So yeah. All right, let's just do this. A lot of this is Tim Holtz ephemera. Um, some of it's from the organic layers. And I've already gone around and inked everything so that we didn't have to sit through that part. And let's just put this over here. Now, I do know that the way that I want to lay this out, basically, and so I'm hoping it's going to work for me. This is my lady. She's one of the Tim Holtz portraits, and I have, pa well, pa I was going to say painted her, but I have colored her with the Crayola markers, and she's basically going to sit in there something like this. And see, I think that I already might have made a boo-boo with the way I was doing things. So I have this pretty little bird, and I think we're just going to put him right over here. And what I did, I also took some of the Tim Holtz, oh gosh, what are they called? I can't remember what they're called. But I did have something else exciting happen today. My papers, my Tim Holtz papers came from uh, Joann's. They were having a sale 
and I pretty much grabbed up whatever of the backdrops that they had left that I thought I might need. And I will grab those and show you those in just a minute. I thought we might add our little bird right about here. Okay. And so there we go. We have a part of our page set up. And let's just see. I did lay these out as well. I cut these into, I think they're called collage strips. I think that's what they might be. I had pretty much laid these out like so. I did cut them in half because I wanted to make sure that all the little pieces I wanted to show would show. And I picked this one because these two little girls seem to be dressed with big fancy flowers in their hair, just like this lady. So I thought that, let's see. Now, did I have this this way? And let's see, I have these. These are from the organic layers. And I had wanted to put one of those down here on the bottom but I want to make sure that I'm not covering up any of our pretty little girl's faces. So let's see, can we size up the grandma here? Let's see, what if we put, see, I didn't really, I had this all laid out in my head, but of course, all right, let's see. We get grandma like that. It sort of looks like the bird is sitting in the flowers in her hair, in her hat rather which is kind of what I wanted to do. I thought that that would be kind of funny if the bird was sitting in her hat. So I had that like that. And let's see, can we manage to get this on? Oh yeah, we can, all right. And then I was gonna put this one over here, but now that I see it, it's kind of covering up that little house there. So let's see, if we put this one keeps fiddling. Let's see. Yeah, you guys get to come along and help me figure out what I'm doing here. Let's see, can we put that one like this? And then keep that there. And maybe we can add that one that way. Mm, I don't think I like that too much. That's too many flowers on one side. All right, let's see. What if, okay, let's pull these out. Since most of the stuff is already glued down, let's see. Oh, let's get our little string out of here. What if we put our little girls under the grandma, like so? How about we pull those up a little further and move those in closer? to grandma. We do want to see our background papers, but we also want to make sure that we're seeing all the pretty pieces parts on these little tabs that I have here. And how about if we, see this is why I cut them in half, because I thought that it might be a little bit easier to make them kind of interesting. All right, how about we put this one like this, and we want the little house to show. So let's move grandma over a bit and pull the girls in really close to grandma that way. See, I had this all laid out, but then I said, you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. And this way you guys can design this out with me. So let's grab our little leaves and how about if we just tuck the leaves in over here, like so. You know what? Let me glue these two down because we know we basically want them in that area because then grandma can be here. Her bird is kind of still sitting on a branch that looks like it's attached to the flowers in her hat. And then we'll figure out where we want to add our little leaves. Okay, so let's glue this down. Let me just grab my pencil and put a little mark round about where we want to put this one. 
Okay, so we're going to make a little mark here and a little mark here. If you've been around with me for a while, you know that I always do this. And let's erase these little pencil marks up here, like so. And I've lost my pencil mark. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Here, we had it right about there. Okay, let's pull that in and try and cover up the little white spot on the frame. We still see our bird. He's lost his tail in the interim, but that's okay. Let's just see. We wanna put the girls here and we wanna put grandma right about here. So maybe should we even just leave that off? Oh, guys, gals, gang, you know what? I think I might even just leave that off. No, nope, that doesn't look right. It's not balanced on the page. Okay. How about if we stick our little snippets in here? We know we want the girls there. Let's see if we can just stick our little snippet in right about there. And that adds some interest on that side. We get our little leaf up there. And we can put Grandma right about here. Oh, I think I'm liking this better, guys. I hope you do, too. And let me, excuse me from reaching around. And maybe we can just put that down a little bit. We're going to have to move Grandma over because we want her not to be. We might even leave this one off. I think that's what we might end up doing. I don't know, let's glue down what we have so far. All right, so we want the girls right about here. We're gonna worry about the flower after and we're gonna make some new pencil marks. I think that's the way we're gonna go with this, guys. Yeah, I've been fiddling and fussing and just fighting with this page. I did lay out the purple page. Um, and what sparked all of that was my delivery this morning from Joann's. I started to say I got my volume five paper pack from Joann's and I had actually ordered two of them. And it's not a paper pack I would normally purchase because to me it was just a little bit Looking at it in a quick glance in, I think it was Hobby Lobby, um, it was just a little too boring for me, and it was too many bright pastels. But then when I started to look at it online on the Joann's website, I said, oh, I really do kind of like that. So I ordered two of them, and I figured that it would work out well both for this little trifold journal, journal, journal that we're creating together and also for the other little one that I'm working on on my own, which I haven't really had too much time to fuss with it lately. I'm just laying this out and trying to, to place it again so that we get everything we want to show showing. Okay, we can actually move them up a little bit Right there. We did make our pencil mark, and now that I'm fussing, I do see our little pencil mark. Um, I thought that that paper pack might work out really well for this little trifold folio and for the folio journal that I'm working on um, in bits and pieces on my own, not on camera. Um, and I did cut out some pieces of it, but... I ended up not putting them down. I'll show you what I did, just so you can get an idea um, after we lay down these little flowers and we get grandma in her place. And we'll just put that one like that. I think that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I picked out papers for the blues, the pinks, the reds, the greens, and then once I had my greens out I, and I had cut up the page I was going to use, I said, you know what? I have enough green ephemera that I can fill up 
this page without having to use any of the backgrounds. I think that the backgrounds will come to play more with the colors that I don't have enough of. Or in, I'm, I have laid out the colors and I have picked out stuff that we can use um, for each color page. And we don't have enough colors for all of the pages that we have available to us for the journal so that um we may have to do we may have to double up on some of the colors if i have enough of one left or what i may do is leave the little small pages for last and what we'll do is we'll do all the color blocking onto the larger pages and this way we know we have enough colors enough of the ephemera to fill up the color be, be enough of one color for us to fill up the larger pages we'll see there we go now we have grandma like so and this is actually working out better than the way i had laid it out before now do we want to add our little leaf i don't know that it really fits anymore because it's covering up a lot of the things that I wanted to show. No, I don't think we're gonna use our little leaf. Well, there's our green page. I hope you guys like that. That's what I had picked out. And I, like I said, I had been using my Crayola markers and so I painted colored grandma's top with different shades of green. And then what I did was I went in and I also blended in uh, some of the brown because the green was quite kind of bright and I just figured I would leave her flowers in pretty colors so there we go we have our green laid out and I hope you guys like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip this over because it'll be a little bit easier for us to work on now if you're losing track of where we are in the folio this is the front cover which is the browns the inside cover, which is the greens. And then this is what I call the back flap, which is actually a center flap, which I discovered I actually like it if I keep it closed that way. So this flap is the one we're gonna use for our purples. All right, now before we lay anything out on the page, you can see I don't have a lot for the purple page. Um, and that would be simply because I am filling a lot of it up with this large pocket card. Um, I did cut apart a page from the, um, oh, which one was it? I can't remember what number it was. The volume five paper pack. I did cut apart, uh, oh, excuse me, the purple page, which sort of is exactly this image right here but then i really didn't like once i had started to lay my pieces out i didn't need it to fill in anywhere and so i put it back aside i didn't want to waste it so but before we start to lay our ephemera down and you can see there's actually really only one two three four five pieces we want to add our lady who i have colored in with pinks and purples, and I added a little bit of brown to highlight her head. We wanna glue her down to our frame because she is a little bit large for the frame. And so in order to fit in her face, I'm gonna have to cut part of it off, okay? So I wanted to glue her down first. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my art glitter glue again, which hopefully will cooperate. You know what, guys? This is actually working out to be a lot better for me than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I think I've said that in yesterday's video. All right, we're just gonna glue, and I'm gonna glue here, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add her onto the back of the frame, like so, oops. And then we're just gonna cut off the excess off the bottom. All right, so we're gonna have her like that. 
and you can see we can see the top of her hair and we can see her and she's straight in there all right we will put her aside just for a few minutes to dry and we'll wipe off that excess glue there okay so yeah she's pretty straight she's good in there i'm going to cut that part off the bottom but we're going to put it aside to dry first now you can see i did also take one of the color strips collage strips i think that's what they're called the collage strips and i cut it in half because we're going to use both halves in two different places on this particular purple page so let me just add some glue onto the back of the pocket card. And I actually was thinking of ordering some more of these. I used these a lot in those collage frames that I had made a while ago. Um, you might remember um, they were large collage frames that I made and I used crackle paint and I used some of the portraits from Tim Holtz. So yeah, let's just get some glue on there. And I did have this lined up. I wanted to bring it into about here, like so. And we just want to make sure it's straight before I push it down completely. So then we have that. And then I had this collage uh, strip, which I found these pretty ladies. And they kind of, again, have the same kind of clothing and hairstyles as this lady. So I figured they would fit nicely on here. And you can see my little pencil marks because I did lay it out. Okay, and I thought that that one could go there. And then I was gonna add this one right along here, just touching the top one. Okay, and then we're gonna add our photo in the center. So let's do that first. I ordered, um, I had seen, I think I mentioned yesterday that I follow Nicole Spore and she had done, she makes a lot of uh, different cards, greeting cards, birthday cards, Christmas cards, Easter cards, whatever kind of card you can think of that you might require. She makes them um, on her channel and she just does some absolutely gorgeous work. And I usually end up falling in love with the stamps and the dies that she uses. And I usually end up spending uh, more money than I want to on said stamps and dies. And she did something, it was called a postage stamp um, card. It was a uh, Christmas card. She did it for Christmas in July. And there was a postage stamp kit, and I don't remember who it was put out by, but I really just couldn't afford it. So I had some postage stamp dies already, inexpensive sets that I had purchased um, on Amazon ages ago before I realized that there were other ones available, maybe a little bit nicer than the one I had. But you know, you live and you learn. But I did go over and I purchased another one um, on Amazon by a company called Globeland. And they are a low-end pricing um, company, but they make some nice dies. And so I purchased a set from them and I punched die cut these out this morning. And I was thinking of doing something with it, maybe with some Tim Holtz stamps and some colorful um, inks. So yeah, we'll we'll see about that. I'm 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 betwixt and between. I really wanted this journal to just all be Tim Holtz, but sometimes you realize that you can't always just have one specific brand, especially if you only have pieces, parts of things that you want to do and they are from other companies. So yeah, I might just fiddle with that. I I die cut it onto mixed media paper so that I could play with inks and markers and there would be no smearing and maybe i thought of stenciling with tim holt stencils onto it i don't know we'll see well oh i cut off my string i didn't want to cut off my string oh well my strings got a little bit shorter guys all right and then i thought we could just add her 
into the center here, like so. And you can still see all the pretty flowers. My string, I'm so sad. I didn't want to cut off my string. And then I have this one. This looks like pansies. And you can see I inked around it and I actually trimmed out some of the white spots. There was a lot of white on this. And I thought maybe we could lay the little pansies down here at the bottom. Well, I don't feel so bad. You can't see my strings anyway. Maybe we'll move her over to right about here. If you can see that this frame matches this pocket card that I chose to use almost exactly. It is it exactly, um, but the bits and pieces of it are, are just uh, parts of what we see on the card. So yeah, I thought we could add her there and then we would have our little purple page. All right, let's glue her down. I hope you guys aren't finding this too simple because believe me when I tell you, I spend a lot of time laying all of this stuff out that although it might seem like quick, quick, quick on the video, when I tell you I've been at it, it's now about 1.30 here in Florida. My husband's out mowing the lawn. My daughter is at work. Um, she received some sad news today. A co-worker of hers passed away. Um, she was a woman in her 60s, not the healthiest, but she had contracted COVID um, and she didn't survive it. And, and it's very sad, very, very sad. She was a very nice person, struggling to make ends meet. She had two jobs, one in particular just to pay for her health insurance because she did have other ailments. But yeah, and my daughter's a little, is very upset. So yeah, that was our sad news today. And so I figured, let me just come in here. I did already do a video that came out today. Today is Thursday. But I said, you know what? Puppies are sleeping. Hubby is working around the house. We do have to go out later. So I said, let me just come in here and craft and get my mind off of it. But before I went off on that sad little tangent there, what I started to say was, I hope that you guys don't find all of this too simple because I really do spend a lot of time um, mapping all this out and, and gathering all of the stuff so that we can just put these pages together. And I, and I do that in lieu of us sitting here for an hour <laughs> Uh, with me fiddling with pages and, and getting frustrated. Let's see if we move the strings, what's left of them, over a bit. Maybe they'll peek out the bottom. Oh, I'm so sad I cut off my strings, but you can't see them anyway. All right, and then we can just lay our flower down there. And this page, these pages, once you start layering stuff on them, they do have quite a bit of texture to them too, which I really do enjoy. Okay, so there is our purple page. Okay, here's our purple page. And that's gonna go here like so. All right, so we have our purple page and our green page and our brown cover. And let's just see how it would look if we lay this down, well, we're covering her face up if we decide to close it this way. But look at the surprise we get when we open it that way. That's really kind of cool. I don't know. We'll see what we're going to do with that. But for now, what I'm going to do is I am going to tuck my little coffee dyed paper back into the journal. And then I'm going to show you some of the papers that I picked out that we can use. We're gonna make her a pretty surprise. So we're gonna close it like that, and we're gonna close it like that, and there we have our little, you can see it's already getting beefy. All right, what I did, let me put this, even though it's kind of rusty, it's gonna keep the little stem there from drying out, okay. Oh, and we have these still, too, we have to add. Should we add those? Let's see. Do we want to do that? Do we want to add our little? Well, we can add one. No, actually, you know what? We're going to save them till later because 
we didn't put anything on this page. But that's what I'm talking about. We have, like I have little bits of stuff of purple left over. I only have a couple of little elements left. I do have another collage strip. And I have the two, these were the pages I had picked out for the green, Manhattan City of New York, because of course, if you can't tell by my accent, I am from New York. And I do have some green elements left. And this little fish, I was going to color him in green. <laughs> Just thought that would be fun. And we have a boat, so fish and a boat. I thought that kind of goes together. And then we still have these elements left up, uh, left over. They're from the organic layers. But let me show you what else I've picked out. This was the page I picked out for the blue. Okay, this comes out of volume five. And it solid and a pretty floral. This was for my yellow. Now, as you know, I don't have a lot of yellow, so that may be very evident in our little uh, journal. This was the red that I picked out. This was what I picked out for pink. And here's another element for the black and the brown. So that's where we're headed with this, guys. Um, and And guys and gals, and I'm going to test out my little idea of maybe color blocking this, and we can add it somewhere in here. I don't know. We'll have to see. I know we don't have enough ephemera for um, making a color block in separate colors for every page, so this is an idea, and it also came with these three little postage things. Um, where did I put it? And I also bought this one. This is a big, this is um, a page die that has little stamp elements to it. But this was what I, what I purchased. I haven't even put my label on it yet. And it's Globe Land Cutting Dies. Um, there is no number. I will link this in the description box below in case you guys want to go over and purchase it. It was relatively inexpensive. I think it was, I can't even tell you because I'm using my phone. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. We still have our little green leaf here. Let's not lose that. And we will tuck it back into our green envelope. Okay. It originally came from the purple, but I didn't like the way it looked with the purple. So once again, brown, green, tannish brownish greenish it kind of melds in with all the colors i don't know how happy i am with the green page but i think we're pretty much stuck with it the purple and then we have all of these pages we still have to decorate so we have one two three four five six seven and the pockets and maybe little itsy bitsies here I may pull out some of my paper dolls and we'll play with arranging them so that they look like they're sitting or standing or leaning. But there we go. Okay, guys, I'm going to send you lots of love, big hugs, and ask you to please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and you can also share my videos um, if you want to. I just found that out um, recently when I was trying to make sure that I linked all of my other videos. If you go into yesterday's videos, I have now designated them part one, part two, part three. This is now part four. Um, go into yesterday's video, which was part three, and you go into the description box. I was able to link all of my videos showing you my mass makes for the elements we did use yesterday in the Christmas journal. Um, and I was also able to link the dies and the stamps that I showed you. The one thing I was not able to link, and I do want to let you know, is I was not able to link the, and I can't find it, the um, Simon Says Stamp, the little um, Christmas ball tag, and the ho, ho, ho. Could not find them anywhere on their website. Like I said, they must have been a gift. Okay, so I'm sorry for that. But if you go over to Simon Says Stamp and you search up Christmas tags, they do have a lot of cute little elements that you can use. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and I'm going to die cut out some tags for us to use in the Christmas journal. Um, I haven't added any extra pockets in here. And I don't know if I want to. I made you one or two. 
um, and I will decide that because we do want to be able to add a lot of our color elements, but I think if I add a pocket or two, I might not need as much ephemera. So yeah, we will see. I will see what I will do. Okay, guys, bye for now. Love, hugs, like, subscribe, comment, share. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.